Welcome to Lobster Magnets Review, the channel, the review. I'm here with my good buddy, Goro Gregoro. Um, we are here to talk about uh, chapter one, uh, three, no, 350 of Berserk. Casca's getting her memories back. She's going to maybe come back, but we don't know. I, and I, did what, I yeah. always have this snapping neck uh, trait? Maybe I have a piece of stone in my neck. <laughs> good, good thing, Greg. If a uh, primate guy comes to kill you, then you can, you know, we'll have an, a, a way to defend against it. Possibly. I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in there. Yeah, Non-berserk yeah, call- related. Yeah. So, so this was basically a flashback chapter where uh, where I got to have. Well, I don't know. I wonder if he like redrew any of this stuff, or if he like just like used images. Well, I guess he had to redrew it because it was from like Casca's perspective. So you know, oh, yeah. it, it wasn't like completely like copy and pasted. He didn't have like some intern go to, like the previous volumes of Berserk, uh, scan it in, or uh, you know, cut and paste it in, or so he could like redraw it. This is um, all redrawn because this style that he's drawing in is very different from the old style that he had. I mean, yeah, we can I probably could look that. at some images. No, no, no. Let's oh. not get into that too much. No, no. Let's let's stay focused. All right, all right. Um, no, I believe you because they have that scene where, like, you know, Guts is having sex, or you know, they're having the sex memory, and then it's like from Casca's perspective, and that obviously wasn't in the original manga. No. So, you know, it's interesting that we're getting this director's commentary uh, version of, like, all Casca's thoughts through the pivotal moments of her life is, you know, these. it's funny that, like, you know, Sh- Shirke and Farnsay have been in the series for so long, but they know so little, and they know even less about, you know, Casca and who she was before. Yeah. Yeah, I bet they're getting sort of, like, they're, they're going to experience a lot of shock. I mean, they already experienced some shock, you know. Throughout Casca's yeah, life, uh, you know, obviously the big the, the bomb we're waiting to go off, the big ball, the big uh, thing that we're looking to, you know, see the, the shoe that we're waiting for to drop is like the eclipse. We want to see the, the absolutely batshit crazy eclipse uh, scene, and you know what happens with Casca for that. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Oh, God, I can't wait for that. It's, uh, and uh, I liked how Farney's like. Sh- tried to shield Shurike from the the sex scene part yeah. of it. He's like, "Don't look, Casca's. You know, you're not supposed to look at this. Imagine <laughs> like what's gonna happen when they see the the fucking eclipse scene. It's just oh, like yeah. uh, that, that, that's gonna be that's gonna like break them. And there's like, <laughs> I, I can't wait for that. I, I'm like waiting for that so badly. But you know, there's that part where like Casca speaks, which is like. Probably the only time she hasn't made, like, retarded babble. Oh, yeah. And she said something really mysterious. I, I want to see something. No, someone. Yeah, someone. So I was reading some, like, speculation and, like, people were reacting to the chapter. And some people were saying that, like, maybe she wants to see Griffith. And that, like, when they go to the uh, Eclipse memory, they're going to, like, have some big scene where, um, you know, they see Griffith say, I sacrifice. And they see, like, the pivotal moment that, like... Because I'm trying to think, is, is Guts the only one who knows that like it was Griffith's choice to like sacrifice them? That's because that's the like big pivotal, most important uh, thing about all of this is that Griffith basically, you know, it was all of his own volition. He had th- free choice in terms of like whether he could not do it and like you know send everyone back to the real world and not have them be you know fed to the apostles as a part of the uh, you know. I, th- I think they did because I remember in the anime uh, Guts was talking to the God Hand and the God Hand was telling Guts like you know this is all because of your com- comrade wished it you know yeah but I feel like for Casca she needs to like see and for them they need to see like I sacrifice they need that because that'll get them on board with killing Griffith um, you know, because that'll they'll understand why he's such a threat and why he's like such a critical figure in Guts's life. Because it's they interesting, still... they don't even know who Griffith really no. is. 
No, know. they <laughs> they have no idea. They've had no contact with him uh, whatsoever. Uh, so they have no idea. I, that I'm they, surprised. Yeah. Like uh, they they still it still seems like they have no idea who he is, even though he's pretty much like the second most important person in Casca's life. No. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's that, that's pretty pretty accurate. Um, well, because you know, guts doesn't want to talk. Guts is not like the kind of guy who talks. And now I need to use my berserk superpowers to turn on the lights. Oh my god, I hate doing this. You, it's part of the eclipse, Isaac. You know. I know, I know. It's the the, the eclipse. There we go. Now the eclipse is over. I I, I, I shoot away the god hand, and the apostles. Um, I was also um, during this chapter. I was looking up some dream interpretation things about it and so so what, what did you find greg what do you want to let the fine people know about uh shoot there's a few things like i focus mainly on memories dreams about memories dreams about memories to dream about a memory suggests that you are ready to rid yourself of your old ways and undergo a transformation. You are ready for a new outlook in life. Recalling a memory in your dream may also be less of a shock than if you had recalled the memory in your waking state. Alternatively, the dream indicates that you have learned from your past experiences. To dream that your memory is getting or has been erased, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's not significant. Well, the significant thing is that, like, you could say that, like, Casca is going to undergo some metamorphosis. And no, that, that's I meant the last part of it. It's like oh. about memories being erased or something. But yes, this this <laughs> couldn't be significant. This is like can be either a breaking point. This could be like sort of Casca like looking at these memories and sort of like easing up on the shock of everything a little bit recalling them in the unconscious state instead of you know in her conscious state well the interesting thing is like what is Casca going to be when she's reformed because like there, there was some foreshadowing where it's like you know she may not want uh to be like you know to live with the trauma or the weight or you know she you know she may not well, you want this but she may not want this and you know it remains to be seen like you know we're going to get Casca back but it may you know maybe become like a monkey's paw wish oh my god what if when Casca reforms, or she'll like want to desperately go back to Griffith. That'd how, be nice. how how fucking cool and awesome, terrible would that be? That that'd be pretty fucked up. But she's like this sort of like <laughs> abused abusive relationship. Yeah, and she's just like. I'll always be loyal to Griffith, and she's like, tries to get away from them violently. I don't know if she'd do that, but I, I could see sort of like she's being drawn to him for some reason that she can't quite articulate, and you know, some sort of like, <laughs> I don't know. Now, now this vision I, of like, I could see it as just like misdirected kind of anger. She, you know, she has like, she is so like unbelievably, you know traumatized by that eclipse event she'll like blame it all in guts and then she'll like attack him and you know try and kill him or and and or get away to try and meet up with griffith that'd be sad um yeah now i have this vision of like you know cost uh griffith and like a white beater like chugging like paps blue ribbon or some other cheap beer <laughs> In like a trailer park, and like, you know, Casca's got like a black eye, and she says like, "I fell down. He didn't mean to hit me. He hit me because he loves me." Or so, so some stupid bullshit like that. Yeah. Some horrible abusive relationship, but uh, well, we'll 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 see. Um, I don't quite feel like that, but um, I feel like you know, this is not like you know, a more traditional fantasy story would be like Casca comes back, she's better than ever. Uh, the magical people give her like dual wielding magical weapons that shoot fire and laser beams and thunderbolts or some bullshit. She gets a magical weapon like Shirk, uh, uh, like a uh, Serpico, and then she becomes like an integral party member. But I feel like, given how heavy Berserk is and uh, how uh, you know contemplative it is in parts, that like that would be the easy cheap way out. And I don't think that the strongest fantasy comic is 
would do something that lazy and dumb. Okay. Um, uh, in some ways, I'm glad though that like we got a, one, that one page spread that was like a huge montage of, um, you know, uh, berserk images uh, of memories. So like it seems like all the shit's out of the way. Now we're finally gonna go to the the eclipse, the one we're waiting for. There is another symbol um, I was looking at for this for this um, chapter, and it looked like they were fighting against like spider or like hair spider monsters. Yeah. Yeah, the hair monsters. Um, so I was looking up the dream uh, symbols for that. So let me read something here. To see a spider in your dream indicates that you're feeling like an outsider in some situation, or perhaps you want to keep your distance and stay away from an alluring and tempting situation. The spider is also symbolic of feminine power or an overbearing mother figure in your life. Alternatively, the spider refers to a powerful force protecting you against your self-destructive behavior. If you kill a spider in your dream, you symbolize misfortune, man, like blah, blah, blah. I don't think any of that like lines up with uh, what's going on with Casca. Okay. So then I, I looked up also hair. Uh, let's see. Something about... There was something about uh, to dream that there are endless amount of bugs coming out of your hair. I thought that could have been connected in some weird way. To dream, I don't think it is. The dream that endless amount of bugs are coming out of your hair suggests that something is weighing on your mind you are confused about, perhaps making a big deal. No, never mind. But there's something about like hair and... Uh, like sexuality or something you're like uh there's like oh. there's like some repressed like sexual feelings or something i'm trying to like think hair symbology i think i mean you could say that like maybe that's connected to like the sex scene with uh guts although i'm trying to think was that the first time casca ever had sex um i think so yeah as um, far as we know because I don't know if we ever saw her sleep with anyone or if that was like – there was like – there was something where she was like almost sold into like slavery when she was young and to become like a sex slave. And that was like her big flashback where Griffith gives her a sword to like kill like the guy who wants to sex slave her. But yeah, I don't, I don't think she they, they've ever show her um, – whatchamacallit? Uh, maybe that's the first time? I don't know. It's a, it's a dumb detail to like perseverate on. But you know, um, in the world of Berserk – given how uh, maidenhood and chastity is such an important part of medieval society, it makes you wonder. But um, well, we know it's the first time Guts had sex. Unless you count Dol, you know, his, the time his, uh, you know, sold him out. Yeah. Well, was it the first time Guts had sex? I mean... Consensual, I mean, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. All right. I'll I'll go with that. But yeah, I thought some of the dream interpretation symbols were kind of oh, interesting. It's, it's it's really funny though when you think about it. Like the, the the first image of Berserk is like him having like sex with like an apostle god hand demon, and he's like this yes. ultra edge lord, and he like blows it up with his arm cannon. Yeah, while having <laughs> and, sex with it. While having sex with it. And then he, like, goes back and he's, like, kind of afraid of, like, intimate content uh, contact and, like, you know, and it sort of makes sense because it was, like, you know, childhood molestation. Yeah. Which is, like, completely at odds with, like, which sort of gives me an impression that, like, you know, um, as much as I love Berserk, I, I feel like Kentaro didn't quite have it all mapped out when he started. No, well, you, you see... This was uh, that moment where he's having sex with the Apostle. That was after his whole adventure with Griffith and him having, you know, relations with Casca. Yeah, but, like, it still seems really out of fucking character. Like, you know, you'd argue that, like, he's much more extreme in the Black Swordsman arc. Yeah. And much more vicious and, and like, brutal. But it still, like, doesn't quite feel in line with, like other stuff we saw of him throughout that arc like you know we don't we don't see like guts like 
you know, ah, I need to go visit the brothel and, you know, get some, uh, you know, good old fashioned medieval whores. But you see, the reason why he was doing that in the first place was just to kill the apostle, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. To, to me, it felt like a super edgy thing that doesn't like that was like really attention grabbing that doesn't quite fit in line with the tone the series later becomes. Okay, I guess I guess so. Yeah, it, 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 you know, compared to everything else we've seen of like guts, like but he is like an edge lord when he is like the black sword, lone black swordsman, like he killed children. Yeah, he killed yeah, children. But, even you know, that felt like more measured than like, you know, like guts doesn't really like sex, and like you know, it's not like, like it's something that's uncomfortable for him, and something that he only gets over with Casca after a very deep and meaningful relationship, and it's a huge cathartic moment for both of them. But he's um, okay it, as it, long it as it's for like revenge. Like, ah, gonna... He's he's willing to go all out for revenge, Isaac. Even sex, he'll go all out just for it's the a, sake it's of a revenge. Dumb scene. It's a dumb scene. It's not a great scene. It's the kind of thing if like you're you're trying to get someone into berserk and then like that's the first page, they would be like, like oh, no, Whoa, you're... this is cool. <laughs> no, this is stupid. This is like Japan animation tentacle porn. What the fuck is this? This is stupid. Oh fuck you, weeboo. I'm never looking at this again. I don't know. I think it's I think it's sort of understandable given his psychological state after all the terrible shit he's gone through. At I that guess point. you could say it's retroactively, but like we never see him do anything comparable. Like, like basically, like okay, then if that's his thing, then why doesn't he have like sex with Slan in the uh, you know troll uh, cave? Uh, you know when she's in her. Uh, because you know, he's traveling. Because he's toned down after a while. He's toned down after a while. Maybe because a he's not the lone black awesome. swordsman anymore. He he gets a adventuring party. He's slowly growing back towards like more human guts, I guess. You know, lone lone black swordsman guts would maybe, maybe lone black swordsman guts would, I think. But not adventuring party guts because he's starting to reform those old kind of feelings of like friendship with, you know, his Band of the Hawk, Nakama, all that stuff. It's like very similar in that respect with this new adventuring party. And Casca is there too. He, you know, he still cares for Casca. Not. Like right now, he's he's not in that blind rage mode where it's just like ah fuck everything, including apostles. <laughs> you, know? you know, that's how I felt about it when I saw it. Um, I don't know. It, it was not one of like the shining moments. It, like people don't say like oh my god that scene was so incredible. This is like this is why you need to look at Berserk. It is not like you know why. <laughs> People love this manga and why we persisted through this manga. All right. Um, but anyway, that was like a huge tangent. Um, you know, we're, we're getting back to the emotional catharsis of getting Casca back. And, um, you know. Do you, do you think these two characters are going to survive Sheik and uh, Farnes Farnes? through this dream thing? Through, I think so. Through the I, eclipse? I think they'll, they'll, they'll survive. Like, there's There's got to be some consequences after they, they, they do this, right? I think they'll, they'll they'll be a little shaken, but I don't think anything bad's gonna happen to them. I I really wonder though. Like, this is like a bit of really big secret. This has been like a huge huge secret they never knew about. There's like two sides of Berserk right now. There's like happy go lucky adventuring party Berserk, you know, that doesn't know anything about the horrific things that happen to Guts and Casca. Well, they've seen enough horrific things that like. You know, it's not going to be, like, too much of a surprise. They were in the troll rape den. They, uh... Okay. Um, they fought against the sea god. They fought against the, the cushions. They've seen their fair share of monsters. I, I guess, but, like... They're, they're going to be traumatized by it, but they've seen they've seen a lot of shit. They've seen giant penis ogres. They've seen a lot of things. Well, 
Okay, I guess when you put it like that, I am a little disappointed though. I I thought they would get a little bit more traumatized. I mean, by... They'll be shaking shaking up a little bit, but like you know, I think there should be a reason why this is like such a big secret though. Like why guts never told them guts is a very introspective character who's not like very touchy feely he's like the classic prototypical you know strong man you would think he would like give them some kind of warning though right like you're about to see something well, he, doesn't know never... fuck, he doesn't know what the fuck they're doing he doesn't know about the dreamworks he just knows that they have to do a thing to help bring casca he doesn't know shit that you know it has anything to do with oh yeah clips. yeah he doesn't know that they're going through all of Casca's no thoughts. That they're like literally watching, you know, a POV porn video of him fucking Casca. <laughs> yeah. You know, all do right. you think Guts would be happy about that if he, um, you know, fucking, <laughs> you know, knew that, that that was like part of the deal? You know, he'd probably be like, you know, oh, let, you know, let's wait a little bit. Let, let, let's see what happens. Yeah. I guess so. So you think if Guts knew like exactly what was happening, he would he would warn them. He'd be like, uh, "Maybe I should tell you what happened." <laughs> maybe I, I think he'd give them a little context if he had if he had personally had greater context of um, you know what was going on. Um, but you know uh, this uh, you know was a bit of a clip show chapter. I, I give it seven out of ten. Yeah, the same thing probably. I give it a seven out of ten. It's just it wasn't a bad chapter, but it's like you know it, we want to move on to the the eclipse part essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to see the berserk is like coming out a decent clip of like once per month. You know, uh, Kentaro's done with like you know whatever he was doing on the anime, and you know now it's back. Um, and you know we want to we want to see this shit. <laughs> we want to see this shit done. For sure. You know, hey oh hey yo. Oh. Exactly. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Um, so I, I think that covers my thoughts on the chapter. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think it was it was a, a decently paced chapter, but I'm just like too anxious to get to the eclipse part. To like, I I just want to get to the eclipse. I'm I'm so excited for that part. I think it's gonna be really, really great. Uh, chapter when that part happens yeah well it'll be interesting to see what his new softer teammates think of his harsh past you know and and if like you know if casca comes back or not or if she's like you know the doll gets broken again that would be tragic yeah it remains with re the retarded little pea child that goes on forever which would be very sad after so many chapters of like seeing them go to elf helm i just feel like something tragic is gonna happen and it's going to be, like, so heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. Well, Greg, have you ever told you my philosophy about, like, the really great storytellers? What's that? I don't know if I said this in another chapter, but uh, or chapter review, but the, the, the really great storytellers don't give you what you want. They give you what you need. <laughs> that sounds like a song. It should be. Uh, George R. R. Martin is, um, you know... You can't uh, always get what you what want. You, you can't you always, always get, get what, what you want. want. But the real storytellers will give you what you need. Like <laughs> the Red Wedding. They'll give you what you need. Like the Golden Age Eclipse. They give you what you need for to make the story actually good. Because you can't always get what, what you want. want. You try sometimes. You want to see Tyrion, Daenerys, and Jon Snow ride on dragons <laughs> and fight the White Walkers. But it's not what you need. Woo! It's not what you need. Woo! It's not what you need. Woo! -woo. I feel like... A wedding. I, I feel like uh, on that note, I've, I've said my piece. I've said my piece on Berserk. Well, thank you um, for watching this video if you have. Um, we know there aren't that many Berserkies uh, who watch the Berserk videos, but we still do them because we love our Berserk. Um, and, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. We'll probably reply to the comments. We like replying to comments. It makes it feel good. Yeah. And uh, have a good one. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Um, All right. Uh, see you later, Berserkies.
Yeah, Berserkies. Guts, Band of the Hawk, Neo. 